y'all doing here? <laughs> Hi, y'all. I don't even. Okay, I like to do this for my own comfort. How many folks here have been ever been to one of my shows? Only one. Oh, thank God. Okay, we're going to be just fine then. You know what I mean. I mean, you know. I mean, if you've been, you do know. So if people are trying to get up and get out, just be nice. Get up. Let them walk. Don't vibe them out. All right. So we are not at a club. Nobody's... Well, I don't know about that second thing, so we'll just say we're not at a club. Um, but it's great to be here. I am so honored to uh, have been asked to do this on account of everything that Leslie said. So I think I should shut up because look at you guys. And um, <laughs> I'm going to start singing. Thanks for coming. For real. Listen. Shh, listen. Y'all hear that? Wait. Oh, it's, okay, it's done. All right. Are y'all good? Everybody's fine? Feel like singing? Really? Because we're going to start off with a sing-along. Okay. Oh, but that's not it. I'll be singing one thing and y'all will be singing another. <laughs> Don't do well. Okay, so I can just do my thing up here, right? I'm not trying to impress anybody or make new friends, right? <laughs> okay, let's do it then. We're going to have some fun. <laughs> Woohoo! Love is but a song I sing Fear is the way we cry You can make the mountains ring Or make the angels cry Though the bird is on the wind And you
understand And maybe listen You hold the key To love and fear All in your trembling hand Just one key unlocks them both It's there at your command Stock, don't you guys? A little bit? Y'all guys, they're live streaming. Hi, li hey out there. Wait, no, you're here. I'm talking to the live streamer guys. <sighs> oh my gosh. Um, here's what's the difference, right? When we're at a club, I feel, well, like, a, like Riz from Greece or something. But like we're at this lovely George and Joyce Ween um, Jazz and Heritage Center. And so, and so I feel, you know, like I need to be a little <clears throat> more respectable. <laughs> so I'm going to try for that. Because I don't think the Jazz and Heritage Center knows me. <laughs> okay. Great. So now, see, right away, I'm going to have to modern, um, kind of taper this here situation. So, all right. So this is a song that was written a few years ago before we traveled for a lovely vacation in Ireland. Yeah. We left during election time. Checking it out, you know. <laughs> anyway, so lovely, jaunty little tune about making choices. Anytime you feel like it, just in case. So here we go. It's for Nate and Nance and Jansen Kelly. But I am always going your way 
you're always going mine on our way to go away unless we Katrina, I do believe that I decided to release my first solo career ever. Because I figured there wouldn't be a whole lot of competition in August and September. Nothing goes on. McCartney doesn't release. It's all cool. But alas, that's not what happened. Um, okay. So this is a very upbeat, um, makes you feel really good about life kind of song. Okay. So your life will change after this. You will never be sad, depressed, or bummed again. That's what I thought if I wrote this. So, let's see what happens to all of us, okay? Okay, here we go. Song about not looking back. Oh, at your husband, trying to get his act together back there. Oh, okay. uh, Well, I was thinking about it on the way back home. Big old boulder has become a stone. I'm still traveling around, I spend in no hurry to get to the end. Are you? Feel better? Well, I have cleaned my windows and now the streaks are gone. I can see from Stay. It's true, I am moving through Starting track to the top of the way Things are changing here every day I'm okay and the sky is still blue Boy, I've seen we make a choice Take or leave it, just believe it Tell me now, what are you gonna do? I wanna believe it, don't Yeah. 
Well, I was thinking about it and I do have to say I am still not sure just how I lost my way But all the same, I'm not turning back These are better days, I won't give them back, would you? that I'll be performing this evening. <laughs> we call my music fetal rock. It's like when you're in a fetal position. <laughs> no, I'm just, that's a continental drifter-ism. Is this not the nicest man? Ladies and gentlemen, Lenny. Now, Lenny got me the towel. That's Michael on keys. But my pal Lenny got me the towel. You want it now, buddy? Okay, good. <laughs> I have six brothers, so I... Yeah. Once, every, a guy is a guy is a guy is a guy. It's just a guy. It's just your brother. <laughs> I did have, well, we won't go into that. Okay, wait, is this just a regular show we're hanging out or are we on TV? I'm, I'm going back and forth. Okay, regular show on TV. Okay, I've been on TV. I know how to act. <laughs> okay, what's next? Oh, I love this. Do I tell anything or I just sing, honey? Okay, great. We try to curtail my stories if at all possible. <laughs> just saying. Well, anyway, I wanted to tell you this one about this. Okay, so this song, it's called, it's called I Never Knew, and I am a serial um, family band, like monog, like whatever that would be. I have to be in a family band. And so I joined these guys called the Hobart Brothers and Little Sis, and the Hobarts were the relatives of the huge Hobart industry, dishwasher people, Hobart, everybody, you know what I mean? Yes. These boys were filthy rich, but they gave it all up for rock and roll. They wanted to be artists, and so they got disinherited by the Hobarts. Very sad. These people are tough, and I know I'll meet a real one someday. <laughs> but until then, I'll carry on with my little tale. 
And my tale says that they left because they were going to be artists, and great granny Hobart didn't like that. So she disinherited them, and then while the boys were out on their travels, they found out that they had a sister who the granny found out was going to be an artist through a psychic, and she had her adopted at birth. She went to a Catholic convent, because that's where you go. And she was there until she was 40, and at 40, you either have to get adopted or you must join the covenant. So she split. And this song is about finding her long-lost brothers. <laughs> yeah, long story short, friends. <laughs> Pretty short song, too. She had a rough night. You're about to hear about it. Okay. Okay, here she goes. Poor little girl. There's another story about her later. Oh, that's the story about the rough night. This is when the boys found her in a grotto in Texas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Center, Jazz and Heritage Center. It's so gorgeous with all the colors and everything. Okay, oh, let's see. Y'all ever heard of Warren Zevon? Okay. Well, it's kind of a little bit of a tale, but it's like this. So I do the ninth grade for my mom like a good kid. 
we cut a deal. I do the ninth grade, I do the play, I get to be in algebra, I go to the dance and everything, and then I cannot go to the 10th grade. She says, you have to get a job. I say, okay. So the only thing I know to do is sing, so I go get a record deal. And I said to the guys at the record place, I said, I need to sign on the paper before September, because <laughs> that's when you gotta go to school. So I did, and um, a lot of music, I didn't know what I was doing, I'd just been in that family band, The Cow Sills, and I wasn't in it anymore, <laughs> thank you. So I didn't know what I was doing, it, like I do now, I just pretend like I do now. But, um, so they would give me a lot of music, and some of it was really bad. And I even did a disco song, you can Google, it's just horrifying. <laughs> It's called The Next Time That I See You. Go Google it. You're like, it's talking about me in the cafe. I'm, oh, it's just, I sound like Olivia Newton-John. I mean, I should be so lucky. But anyway, this here song, so I told a bunch of my friends who were kind of good musicians, and I said, you guys, help me out. I need a real song. So a friend of mine named Jackson Brown brought this demo over of this guy named Warren Zevon. And this is 1970-something, so nobody's all excited about it. And anyway, so he gave me this song and I'm listening to it and I'm like, I don't even know what it's about. And I, so I said, Jackson, I don't know what it's about. He goes, oh, neither does Warren, just sing it. <laughs> I said, okay, good enough for Zevon, it's good enough for me. And the footnote of this, my friends, is that I recorded this song before Miss Ronstadt did. That's your, that's your hint, and here we go. Everybody's restless And there ain't no place to go Someone's always trying to tell them Something they already know So their anger and resentment shows
heard it last night on my radio, Mohammed's radio. Warren Zeebaum! In the house. Thank you. Warren was a good friend of my brother, oldest brother, Billy. And I came home from school one day and both my bikes were gone. And my brother Bill goes, I mean, I'm going home from school, I'm gonna ride my bike. And I'll just one of them. And I'm like, what's happening here? I was kind of, it was when things were going good for the cows. And my brother said, well, I gave your bikes away to Warren's little kids. I'm like, well, what did you do that for? He goes, because they can't afford them. And I went, oh, <laughs> I'm happy. I'll go jump on my trampoline and swim in, or swim in my pool now. I mean, really, my problem's not. But anyway, I just thought I'd share that. So, <laughs> I did. <laughs> now we're all shared up and jelly tight here. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. This is a weird song, so it's time for a drink or call the kids, the sitter check. Oh, wait, we're way too old for sitters anymore, right? We don't, I mean, my God, I sit my grandkid. What am I even, I'm sorry. I get a little lost up here. <laughs> All right, so uh, like I was saying, um, this song, this next song is weird. It's not finished, but the kids I was produce that were producing this with me said it was finished. And I come from a land of verse, verse, bridge, chorus, verse, out, three minute, five, or you don't get on the radio. Thank you, whoever said that. They, they complain about my short songs, and I mean, I'm trying up here. So anyway... Um, but it's a really, I, I like this song because it, it just, it's about how we, um, it's about how we all have a story. I mean, every person in this room has a story from the minute they got here till now. And it's packed and it like matters and stuff. Um, and so I wrote a song about that. And I wrote it for a buddy who was on her way out of here, if you will. And it was her kids producing it, so I let them have their way. <laughs> and so uh, it's called Another Summer Coming. And, and here it is. Another summer coming, waiting for me. I got my heart in my pocket I'm ready I'm 14 and free I'm gonna sit right here while the clouds they all roll by and I will dance the night of Stars 
crashing down when this world is starting to blur listen to what you know that you heard and be free and Some are coming, waiting for me Well, I got my heart in my pocket Cause I took it off of my sleeve And I'm gonna stay right here while the miracles arrive Another summer is coming I'm not 14 But I am still I'm still free I'm free okay. Thank you Thank you. Are we still on TV? <laughs> I know. Don't think I don't know. Oh my God. I forgot that earlier. I hope maybe they'll do a little... Because I, I didn't say it, but I... It's kind of, anyway, all right. Enough of this nonsense. So, life goes on, does it not? And we tend to have to um, swallow things like losing loved ones, which... Um, you know, it's a big part of this, and by the look of all of us, it's a bigger part for us as we move along. And so a few years back, sometime right before COVID and the whiteout of our brains, um, we lost my father-in-law, Pop, Joe Broussard. And we um, were fortunate enough to, we, we, um, he ended up in the hospital, but we got him out right before the big COVID. You can't get anybody out ever again and thing, you know. That was a, and so we got him home, and we, we had Pop home, and it was great, and uh, Mom was happy, and we were all happy to have him there, and it was a bit strange, you know, because, like, like everybody was everywhere, and the kid, Russ was playing ball over, <laughs> it was, like, wacky, um, but um, on this particular evening, Pop and I were sitting together, and, and there's a big bed in the room, we're all in the bedroom, and all the Broussards were sleeping on the bed together, it was pretty cute. And I was sitting talking to Pop, who wasn't, he was a man of few words to begin with, and he was even shorter on them at this point, because he was one foot in and one foot out. And I said to him, I said, Papa, what am I going to do with all those Broussards? Look at them, because they're going to be sad when you go. And he said, without moving, very Edgar Bergen, um, didn't, <laughs> not, not a lip, not nothing. And he said, and real big help not, he says, Sha. He was Cajun. Into each life, some rain is going to fall. Now, how can you be so clever and witty and not move your lips and have something like that to say, which was zero help? I'm like, <laughs> well, I know. I think I just said that to you. <laughs> anyway, so what happens to people like me with music Tourette's or whatever? You just can't get something out of your head. And now I, Pop and I wrote this here song. So this is for my family, Broussard, which I heard they were out here somewhere. So uh, where are you guys? Did y'all leave? <laughs> I told them, look, I gave them permission to go. They're like, well, cool, we'll get out of here then.
You know, we're a very close family. We can treat each other that way with no hurt feelings, for real. Ginger said she sat them right there, and I see the empty seats. Now Ginger will go look for my family. Y'all are in trouble, Bruce Arts. We're not doing this song. I'm dedicating this to y'all. Well, yeah, I really am, though. Okay, hold on, it's capo. Okay, so yeah, so I write, so, you know, unfortunately we won't be doing my co-writes with dead people tonight. But I have a lot of them. I'm sorry, folks, but this is the way it is. You know, some people don't want to talk about it, and I just, I just do. <laughs> um, so this is my, thank you, my only uh, co-write with a dead guy. And he wasn't dead, so it doesn't even count. So, here we go. Oh, oh yeah, I, well, I got it. I just, <laughs> and that's why I have these guys with me. Oh, yeah. You've never seen me alone. There's a reason for that. It's like you never saw Clark Kent and Superman together at the same time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's going to make you feel better. I think this is my favorite part. He wasn't talking about the weather, but you know, it was his way from the start. I once knew a man, quiet as can be, stood tall just like a tree. I asked him one day to help me find my way. I kind of lost my way. He said that I would feel better if I would listen to my heart Then started talking about the weather Cause you know that was his way from the start And then he said Into each line Some rain is gonna fall Some rain is gonna fall But don't you think twice Be happy for it all And let that rain just fall it's gonna make you feel better cause every rainbow plays its part he wasn't talking about the weather but you know that was his way from the start and then he said remember things are gonna get better but sure is I'm still here winds gonna blow Nothing ever changes ever Until you let it in And let it go sky just in the nick of time red as can be and they began to sing don't worry about a thing they only want to make it better because they can see it in your eyes they sing and promise that the morning's gonna come and the sun is gonna always rise that rain just fall it's gonna make you feel better cause every rainbow plays its part he wasn't talking about the weather but you know was his way from the start Papa song
Did you ever find my people? <laughs> Where are you? Yeah, waving, shuck. Very sheepish waves from the back. <laughs> that was fun. Okay. You didn't even do that on TV. You guys were on TV with that. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, here we go. So, really, and I am not even kidding when I tell you this, I get so sick of my songs. I am so tired of this story. So I sing other people's um, stories that they're tired of. Because literally, look, Judy Collins was tired of her stories so much, she gave them to all these really great singers to sing. She didn't even want to sing them. She's like, write it, get it out of here. Just him and it and everything. So, um, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to sing somebody else's misery for you <laughs> this evening. I will represent Miss Judy. Might even uh, let you know how Miss Ronstadt feels a little later. But right now we're going to do a Judy Collins song that also was sung by uh, Sandy Denny, if anybody knows who that is. Okay. Yeah, old times. That's me, old timer. Across the evening sky All the birds are leaving And how do they know It's time for them to go
I don't If you're wondering why the boys look quizzical, it's because I rearranged that little tune. Because you know what, y'all? Yes. Kind of can. <laughs> I mean, I don't do anything on purpose. I can promise you that. You are looking at an absolute knee-jerk reaction to life right in front of you. <laughs> so, uh, and with that in mind, we will move along to, oh, good, this is good. This is good stuff. Anybody ever hear of the Continental Drifters? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> well, huh? Oh, right. Well, they're a really great band, but they have absolutely nothing to do with this next song. <laughs> yeah, uh, they will in a minute, though. <laughs> but uh, I, as we spoke earlier, <laughs> listen, I put all this stuff in here for you guys. I don't want to disappoint you. What if I come out here on point? Who wants that? None of us, especially me. <laughs> okay, so with that in mind, it's time to sing about Linda's misery. <laughs> so here we go. Well, I should have, that's why I was gonna take this off. I knew the whole time. Okay, I'm not dancing or anything, don't anybody. <laughs> Ain't nothing different gonna happen right now. It's just, I'll be like this. That we're through Feeling better Cause I'm over you
Thank you. I would love to introduce you to this amazing band that I am always so lucky to have. So over here, let's see if I can get this right. We have Michael Lemmler, yeah. also known to not many of us as Lenny. Um, over here we have, this is a really fun one, check it out, we added a new one. This is James Dave, but James James, Dave Dave, Jim Jim. So there you go. This gentleman needs no introduction, but I'll do it anyway. It's Renee Komen from the Iguanas. Yes, Renee keeps us on point. And of course, my wonderful husband, Russ Broussard. Okay. Meh, I'm dainty June. <laughs> uh, you'd have to have seen Gypsy. <laughs> okay. Y'all remember the Continental Drifters? wonderful we just so happen we're going to be doing a song by them so um yeah this here aren't we rain song oh my god if i've got it it's rain does it is it rain That's yeah okay good i mean you don't want to do this on tv it's one thing in a club but you don't want to do this on tv okay so yes are you ready oh so oh boy i'll tune after this you ready lenny Oh, hell yeah. You see, oh, come on. Born. Born. Born ready.
Thank you. Yeah. God, I swear, a good breakup can really bring a, a song. You're just, ugh. You know? And it can be 40 years later, and you're singing, and you're just like, yeah! It's great stuff, music. <laughs> really works, like they say it does. It's like, like on TV when they tell you. It's for real. Remember watching cartoons when we were kids? Oh, no, commercials when we were kids, and the kids would all be playing with all those toys and the cool terrains they were playing with the toys in, and then you get the toy home, and you don't have the cool terrain, and you're like, this toy is useless. <laughs> Thanks. I just wanted to know. Yeah, like, you know, you get the trucks, and these kids have these mountains and these trees and stuff in their backyard, like tiny ones. We didn't have that. Oh, good. This is very good. Okay. <laughs> this is a song I wrote with the exact same theme as I always write about, which is hanging on, you know, for dear life. But I wrote it in this really upbeat, like, you don't even know that's what it is. Just try and, try and find it if you can. I, I urge you. These are not going to get clean. So, here's a song about that. <laughs> Ready, guys? Hanging on by a thread Or climbing up on a lifeline Taking a sip of imagination so mad at me, but I don't care. So for a performer who's singing, and you're singing a song about being Torah, perhaps, I don't know, let's just say you are. So you're just you're telling this story, this horrible thing that happened to you, to music, and then at the end of it, everybody goes. <laughs> so check it out. So, right, thank you. So picture this, because it's the same thing. Me and you are at coffee. And we're sitting across from each other. You go, how's it going? I go, well, yeah, this guy, and he did this, and he did that, and he did this, and that, and the nose. And then that person goes, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, you see, so sometimes it's odd when you
when you finish doing something, everybody's clapping, you're like, <laughs> just thought I'd share that too. So, what do we got? <laughs> Real life, what? Thank you. Thank you, one supporter over there to the far. All right, okay, well, who knew? <laughs> okay, this next song, boy, this is a doozy. I say that just to figure out what I'm going to say next. <laughs> um, I have to tune that. So this is a song I wrote about not wanting to have to write songs. Or more to the point, to not be on a deadline. Because I was a musician all my life for a reason. Like deadlines. Okay, so the deadline problem. So I had a deadline and I couldn't finish it. I was supposed to get a record done in time. Um, and that is also a problem. And so I was working on a song really hard and I couldn't figure out the bridge. So I put that song away and this song came in its place. A whole song out of nowhere. And it's a protest song about having to finish the other song. <laughs> and a little, a couple other things too, perhaps. real life. Yeah. Much too much time on my hands. Not enough time in the day just to be who I am. of cold winter's days because sometimes real life can be way too much grown up for me and sometimes real life can be a beautiful place that you never ever want about Spain and the rain on the plain and just what kind of plain did they mean because sometimes real life can be much too much grown up for me and some you never ever want to leave. Oh yeah, I am over my head and I'm under the gun. And when It's the end of the show, but I can come back whenever I please Because sometimes real life can be way too much grown up for me And sometimes real life can be a beautiful you never ever want to be. 
You feel me, right? extra coffee. <laughs> I wanted to sing this. Look, Renee's answer, whatever you want. I'm here for you. He comes back. Okay, there's a comer backer right here. We got a, two gigs in a row right behind me on bass. See how we're doing in the back. <laughs> And we're on TV, okay. So, but I want to sing. Oh, uh, we were overzealous and we wrote down too many songs, you guys. So we have to kind of, cause yeah, I got excited. This is, we're not in the club. I'm legit, okay? This makes me feel legit. I'm not kidding. You have no idea what it means to me to be from New Orleans. You don't, I am. I can't even, I'll start bawling. I didn't wear makeup just in case I got emotional. Right? <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna, because this next song was written by a brother of mine who is in a blood brother, but he's my brother just the same. His name's Wadi Wachtel, and he's a guitar player, and he is actually Stevie Nicks' um, musical director. And he, um, he's played for Linda Ron's, all of Linda Ronstadt's hits, he wrote songs for Linda. He played guitar, and he is, like I said, he was here just the other night with Stevie. Anyway, I've known him since I was five because he had a band when he was a young man called the Twice Nicely. And he and my oldest brother, Bill, were best friends or good friends in Rhode Island. And so my dad, when we loaded up the truck and moved to Beverly, and I'm not kidding, um, <laughs> to be the cow seals that afternoon, we brought the Twice Nicely band with us to Los Angeles. And my dad mismanaged them for a few years. And then <laughs> Waddy went out and tried out on his own. And he uh, did very well once he left the guidance of my padre. So, um, and with no further ado, we will sing one of his lovely songs that he, he wrote for Linda Ronstadt. <laughs> He knows her, <laughs> and, uh, and he's my friend, <laughs> so I feel cool. And uh, anyway, this is a song that he wrote for Linda, and I actually have a copy of him singing it to her the first time on the bus that nobody will ever get to hear. But I have it. Okay. It's a beautiful song, and he's a wonderful guy. So it's just from Wadi. <laughs> It's the way it should be Nobody knows when the truth comes down But everyone tells me that he is happy Just to let him alone But I can't even sleep no more Worries me so Why, why, why 
saying is the way it should be. Somebody tried to explain it to me, but they, they couldn't tell me if he was happy. And I just want to know if he's still meeting over? Um, oh, oh boy. Okay, yeah. Okay, so huh, I forgot about this part. So I'm going to do a song by Melanie, who we just lost. Yeah, that's a drag. And uh, she was pretty cool. Um, my brothers and I, we have a podcast. <laughs> And uh, she came on it. Uh, she was our guest, and she was she was so cool. We were at a award show with her um, a, a bit before, and she was very shy. We didn't want to approach her because she looked like too cool for school, and really she was just very shy. And she kept saying she was wishing we would come over and talk to her. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, when she was 18 years old, she became a phenomenon. Uh, didn't even understand what was happening to her own self. Um, and uh, she went to Woodstock, and she, the next day she wrote this song. She was 18. So, yeah, Melanie. Others homes. We all had caught that same disease. We all sang the songs of peace.
Thank you, isn't that fun? God bless Melanie. All right, you guys, this is the last one. I cannot tell you how wonderful this has been. Y'all are beautiful and smiley and lovely and uh, just thank you a lot. Okay. Oh. So remember that chick? Remember the Hobart sis? So here's the thing, the night she got out, you know, she kicked her out. Oh, she's out there. So she's out there and then she got picked up by this dude. And this is her story of her first night out of the convent. All right, see you guys at French Quarter Fest, right? Okay.
about you guys. song and you are all ready for it so let's just we'll go out with the love train because I love you all so much thank you Yeah. 